If your nib's too slow and your ink won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to help you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Review. Hey, Larry here, Larry's Fountain Pen Review. Today we're going to be talking about two different kind of pens. Uh, totally on just two different kind of worlds. We're going to talk about the world of the Jinhao 159 and how this Jinhao 159 led me to get this. Mont Blanc 149. I'll go over the measurements, do some writing samples, and go from there. So, this was back in 2015 when I first purchased my uh, Jinhao 159. Uh, that wasn't my very first pen. I, I got that months later because I like the shape of the pen, a nice kind of a cigar shape type pen. So the length of this pen is 5.83 uh, inches. And you can unscrew the cap and it does post securely and that will make it 6.55 inches. And if you don't care to post a pen, I have small hands. Yeah, it does all right, but for me, I'd rather post a pen because it feels just a little bit too short for me. I don't know. Other people might find that to be acceptable. Uh, maybe just me. Funny. Okay. So posted at 6.55 inches. Now, the Mont Blanc... 149. I believe I got that in 2016, some, somewhere in there maybe, because I got this one from Anderson Pens. I remember that day. Now this one, well, the length of it is 5.77 inches, and again the 149 is 5.83 inches. Posted the 149 Mont Blanc comes in at 6.55 inches. And the Jin Hao comes in at 6.55 inches. Both are the same length. Is that true, Mr. Announcer? Uh, it should be. Ah, okay. So, the uh, 159 Jin Hao weighs in at 48.6 G's, while the 149 Mont Blanc weighs into 32.2 G's. That was interesting. This has the the, the uh, silver trim on the 149. Beautiful. And of course the Jin Hao has just the steel trim on it. Nice clip. Jin Hao logo right here. I like the girth on the pen, nice large pen, it's got some weight to it. This is a more of a middle type with lacquered, I believe, uh, on the cap and, and the uh, barrel. A nice high polished lacquer where the Mont Blanc is a really nice precious resin that's, they make their pens out of quality. So, another thing I liked about this pen, the 159, that it uses a number six nib. Plastic feed, basic. 
and when you unscrew the barrel, it does come with a grip. I'm sorry, with a converter, a grip, the with a, a converter, and that's cool. Affordable, yeah, you can get these under five bucks. The pin to me was going to come in handy because they use the number six nib. Now they they write just fine right out of the box with the standard uh, Jin Hao nib, but I like to experience different nib sizes, and this gives me the opportunity to do that. So I have several Jin Hao one fifty nines that I have several different nibs in it. And this nib I have in it right now is the Anderson 1.5, I believe. Yep, two-tone nib. Beautiful nib by Anderson Pins. Nibs are affordable as well. So, if you're not sure of what nib size you that you want that will fit you, then I suggest you might try to go with not necessarily this pin, but the pin of your choice that uses a number six nib or a number five nib. And that way you can buy other nibs and change them out to see if you're going to like that nib size or not. Okay. So. Now let me show you the nib on the 149 and then on the Jenna. Well, it's Anderson nib. I'm not going to do that. So here's this beautiful nib on the Mont Blanc 149. Beautiful, gorgeous nib. So that's the story how the 159 Jin Hao led me to get my first Mont Blanc 149. And I'm glad I did it. I love my Mont Blanc. So, let's go ahead and ink this pen up a little bit and do some writing and show you what the uh, Anderson 1.5 nib, how it writes. I'm not going to put a whole lot of ink in there. This pen is a lot of fun. The Jin Hao 159 to me is it, it's really a lot of fun because, like I said, I can change the nibs out, fool around with them, change out the inks as often as I want, just have a interesting time interacting with my pens and nibs. All right, so let me get the. My notebook out, my endless notebook out, and we're gonna go to town with it. Page two. All right. Well, that's really laid it on there. What size nib is that? One point five stub. Sweet, look at that. Lay down that ink. I like that. Yeah, and I'm using that noodlers. L. Lawrence, I think I better write that down for people. That is beautiful. And let's do some writing.
it really lays down the ink on this nib. I've got great ink flow. I love the ink flow on it. Nice and wet. And, of course, the good old wet test. And nice, wet, and juicy. Now, here's the downstroke on this uh, 1.5 stub. You got a nice downstroke with a, a wide downstroke. Then the crossstroke is going to be thinner. But it's wider on the down, thinner on the cross stroke. So, there you have it. The Jinhao 159 versus the Mont Blanc 149. High end pin, very low end pin, but a lot of fun to experiment with. If you're a beginner, just now into the fountain pen world, if you're thinking about getting your first fountain pen and you're unsure, especially about what size nib do I want to try? There's so many different size nibs. Is that one for me? I would suggest, highly suggest that you get a low end pen that you can change out the nibs so you can check out the different size nibs that's going to fit your taste. Is it going to be extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, 1.3, 1.5, 1 1.9, they even have extra, extra fine, they have all kinds of sizes of nibs, right? So, and that way you can play around and have some fun with the pen, and then when you're ready to bite the bullet, say, okay, I am ready to get this, the real deal. Well, folks, hope you enjoyed today. Pin Fest with the 159 versus the 149. Anderson nib on this one, 1 1.5. And, of course, this is a Mont Blanc medium 18K nib on it. Beautiful nib. Beautiful fountain pen. Love it to death. Mwah! I love my pens. Hey, folks. I've had a blast today. <coughs> so, wash your hands. And as always, remember, don't text and drive. Take care, friends. See you later. Peace and love. And we are out of here. Goodbye. <laughs>